Miss Mandy here from the Huntsville Madison County Public Library and I'm bringing you another STEM video. Now this is week five of our virtual summer program which means our theme is imagine your story. Well I was reading a story the other day it's a young adult graphic novel actually and it was about what happened if one day we woke up and gravity was gone. We had no gravity. Well, in the comic, it seems pretty cool because, you know, without gravity, they can fly, they can float, they can just do all this super cool stuff. But it got me thinking, what would it really be like if gravity just disappeared? It would not be good. Gravity is the force that holds everything on Earth, okay? It is a constant push on us, or more like a pull, a constant pull that keeps us grounded on the ground. When you jump up, you come back down. That's gravity. What goes up must come down, okay? Well, in the book they got to do lots of cool stuff and fly and float around, but if gravity really disappeared, it would be really bad for us because our atmosphere, what holds in all the air we breathe and our weather and different things like that, our atmosphere would just disappear. It would just float away without gravity, which meant we wouldn't have any air to breathe. And also all of our water would just float right up in the air and shoot right out into outer space. So we would have no air, we would have no water. That would not be a good thing. But it's a really cool story and it makes you think, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about gravity and then we'll talk about some other stories revolving around gravity. Okay, so I've got two balls, okay? Tennis ball, golf ball. Now the tennis ball is bigger than the golf ball, but it's lighter. Golf ball weighs more, it's a little more compact, but they're different sizes, different weights. Now I've got, you can't really see it, I'll pick it up, I've got a baking sheet, you know, you make cookies on it, okay? I've got that on the ground, so when it hits it'll make a loud noise and you can hear it, okay? So they're different sizes, different weights, but if I drop them, from the same place, which one do you think would hit first? You think it would be the bigger tennis ball or the heavier golf ball? I don't know, let's see. All right, ready? Here we go. I'm gonna try and make sure the bottom is even, okay? Because if I hold them like this, obviously the tennis ball's gonna hit first because it has a head start. All right, so bottom to bottom, here we go, and drop. Ooh, that almost sounded like two. Let's try it one more time. All right, it's hard to drop things at the same time. One, two, three. <laughs> that was one bang. Now, wait a minute. Bigger, a little bit lighter. Smaller, a little bit heavier. But they hit at the same time. Hmm. Okay, hold on. What about golf ball? Now back in the, five, the 1500s, a guy by the name of Galileo, he theorized, which means he thought it to be true and he did things to try and prove it. He theorized that everything on earth, no matter the size, no matter the weight, falls at the same speed without take, if you could not take air into account. We not take air into account. We're surrounded by it. Okay, so if everything, no matter the size, no matter the weight, falls at the same speed, let's test it out. Golf ball, feather. Which one do you think will land first? Golf ball, feather, golf ball, feather. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. Ready? Here we go. And go. That golf ball bounced four times before the feather hit. So heavier, lighter, but last time, heavier and the tennis ball was lighter, they hit at the same time. So what's the difference? Something called air resistance, okay? Now this feather, even though it's lighter, it's got all this pretty feathery plumage going on. It catches the air and it slows it down, okay? So even though this is heavier, they would fall at the same time if air wasn't filling up all of this and slowing it down. You're like, 
But Miss Mandy, the golf ball's heavier. That means it lands at the same time. Think about that for a second. How about this? Two pieces of paper. Exactly the same. I pulled them out of the same stack. Okay? Two pieces of paper exactly the same. Okay? I'm going to leave this one alone. This one. I'm going to ball it up. Flat piece of paper. Crumpled piece of paper. Are they still the same thing? Yeah. One piece of paper, one piece of paper. Okay? So, last time we said the golf ball hit first because it was heavier, because the feather doesn't weigh much. But then I was like, I don't know, air resistance is going to slow down the feather. This is going to prove it. Exact same weight because they are the exact same thing. Ready? Make it even. Here we go. And took forever for that piece of paper to fall. So, this fell immediately, and this kind of floated down like the feather did. That's because of something called air resistance. Even though they're the exact same thing, the exact same weight, this is big and flat. Has a lot of area for air to push against it. Because believe it or not, air is constantly pushing against us. We just don't notice it because it's always there. We, we're used to it. We don't feel it, okay? It's kind of like when you're in, in a swimming pool and you dive down really deep and you start to feel the pressure on your ears. Kind of the same thing, but we're used to the air pressure, okay? Well, if Galileo said, no matter the weight, no matter the size, things fall at the same speed without air, how would you ever be able to test that? Somebody actually did. And it's very cool. One of the astronauts that landed on the moon did this experiment in space on the moon, and it was fantastic. Open up another YouTube window and type hammer, you know, like nail and hammer, hammer versus feather. It is the coolest thing. So hammer versus feather, moon, and it'll bring up something about physics on the moon. And you click on that, it's a little grainy because I think it was the 70s and also they're in space. So it's, we didn't have very good signal back then for space. And it's so cool because they take a hammer, which is heavy. If you've ever had to nail a nail, you know a hammer's heavy. And a feather, just like this feather here, they dropped the hammer and the feather at the same time and they fell at exactly the same speed and landed at the same time on the moon. Super cool video, look it up. Feather versus hammer moon, super cool. Because guess what, the moon is a, in what is considered to be the vacuum of space, meaning there's no air up there. If you're on the moon, you can't breathe. That's why you have the cool space suit, okay? So there's no air up there. You can actually do this experiment for real. They proved Galileo right. So I don't know how he knew that in the 1500s without being able to go to space, but he was a smart, smart man. Okay. So gravity is what pulls us down, okay? Now that comes into play with something else, balance. Now I'm gonna move my little cookie sheet out of the way because I don't wanna step on. Now, if I told you to stand on one foot, you could probably do it like this, but a lot of times when people stand on one foot, they have to put their arms out because they have to find their center of gravity. Now the center of gravity is however you position something, some object, it could be yourself, it could be a ruler, okay, where you have to find the center of gravity in order for it to balance, meaning both sides are in balance. Okay, I'm gonna try and do it with this ruler. I'm not gonna let go of it until I feel like it's not gonna fall. There we go. The center of gravity of this ruler, believe it or not, is not at exactly six inches like you think it would be. Because a ruler is 12 inches, half of it's six, that's the middle, that should be it. Nope, it's a little off because, you know, it's made from plastic, so one side of the ruler may be slightly heavier than the other. There we go. So everything has a center of gravity. 
if you are an athlete or if you dance, you guys got the whole center of gravity balance thing down. You have better skills than most of us. And if you do yoga, you have an extremely well center of gravity because I've tried to do yoga and I fell over. So you have to have good balance. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple of fun things with balance and center of gravity, okay? Now, the first one is called the heavy foot. Well, your foot's not that heavy and you can pick it up. You know, I'm gonna pick up the other one. It's not that heavy. But if you get against the wall, I'm gonna do the door here so you can see me, okay? Now what you need to do, pick a side. You can do your right side, you can do your left side, whichever side. Put it up against the wall. Your shoulder, your head, and the foot closest all need to be touching the wall, okay? Now, I'm a grown-up, so my hips are a little bit bigger than yours. It's hard for me to get that other foot to touch the wall. But that bottom foot closest to the wall needs to be touching the wall. Your shoulder, your head, all touching the wall. Without moving, try to pick up that outside foot. It's impossible to do. I can bend it, but I cannot, no matter what I do, I cannot lift it off the floor. Now, if I take a step away from the wall, can I lift it off the floor? Absolutely. It's easy as it can be because the foot's not really heavy. Why is that? Because when you have to lift one part of your body off the ground, your mind is so smart, it does it automatically. You don't even have to think about it. It knows how to find your center of gravity. If you lift one foot, and I don't just bend it up, but if you stick it out, what do you do? You lean this way, uh, subconsciously. You don't even know you're doing it. You go to pick up your foot. You tend to lean to the other side. What are you doing? You're finding your center of gravity. That's how you find your balance, okay? I'm gonna show you another one. I'm gonna reuse my crumpled ball of paper. All the way against the wall. You want your booty against the wall. You want the heels of your feet against the wall. You can take your paper, just drop it. Yeah, well, not that close. Okay, let's push it out a little bit. All right, about a foot away from you, okay? So heels of your feet all the way against the wall, booty against the wall, and your back. And try and bend over without bending your knees to get that piece of paper, okay? So you don't move your feet, you don't move your hips, you just bend at the hip, and what happens? <gasps> You fall forward. Okay, I'm gonna move it out just a little bit, all right? But if you take a tiny step away from the wall, and then without bending your knees, bend only at your waist or your hips to get the paper and no problem. Why is that? Well, what did I say about the heavy foot? If one foot goes out, your body tends to lean the other way. Well, what happens? when you bend over to pick something up, okay? Now, when you lean forward, your shoulders and your head, they're not super light. They have weight to it. So when you start to bend forward, gravity starts pulling your face down. It just starts pulling your head down to the ground because that's where gravity wants you, is on the ground. So as you bend, gravity starts to pull the upper half of your body and look what happens. You stick your booty out. You shift your hips back as you bend over to allow yourself to pick it up without falling over. So when I asked you to do it up against the wall, your hips couldn't shift. So all you could do is bend straight forward. Gravity's too strong. Pulled you right to the ground and almost fell over. So finding your center of gravity is very important, especially when you do dance or athletics. Gymnastics are phenomenal about knowing where their center of gravity is. They dance on a balance beam. It's like this wide. It's like the width of their foot. I don't know how they do it. They have exceptional balance. Okay, so if you enjoyed learning about balance or center of gravity, I've got some books for you guys, and then I've got a really cool like craft type thing you can do, but I'm going to show you the books first. 
If you want to get super scientific, go for a book about gravity. This one is actually in our juvenile graphic section because even though it's super scientific, it looks like a comic book. It's a graphic novel that is nonfiction because it's all true science stuff about gravity. It's a really cool series. There's all different kinds. Okay, you've got that one. Maybe you just want something cute and fun. Got this easy book called Floaty by John Himmelman. It's about a dog who, that gravity has no effect on. He just floats around. It's pretty cute. It's, it's a picture book, but it's really, really cute. And then, who has the best balance ever? Tightrope walkers. And it's called The Man Who Walked Between the Towers. Now, the Twin Towers in New York, they're not there anymore, sadly. They got knocked down. But what this guy did is used a tightrope to walk from one building to the other. These buildings are so tall. It was just ridiculous. That was his view. That's how high up in the air he was. This is a true story. Somebody really did this. And a tightrope? I mean, a tightrope is really little. It's a rope, like a rope. And people know how to walk across it. And you see this big, long pole he's got? That helps him find his center of gravity. It keeps him balanced. Because what happens when you walk? You have to pick up one of your feet in order to put it in front of the other. Well, if you're that high up in the air, it's not like you could put step to the side to get your balance, no. So that big long pole is like putting your arms out in order to walk. It kind of helps you find your balance. So very cool book, The Man Who Walked Between the Towers. And it is by Mordecai Gerstein, okay? Very cool book, I suggest reading that one. All right, now, for our craft, Okay. Oh, I forgot to bring it over. Hold on. One second. One second. I didn't get it out of my little plastic thing. <gasps> All right. So, we talked about air resistance for just a little bit. Okay. Now, if you've ever been in a car, driving down the road, going pretty fast, stick your arm out the window, or even just your hand, because you don't want to get in trouble for sticking your arm out the window, you just kind of put your hand out there. You feel that wind hitting your hand. Well, what happens? The faster the car is going, the stronger that wind is. But guess what? It's not wind. The air is not moving. You are. So what you're feeling is the resistance the air is putting forth on your hand that's trying to cut through it that fast. Okay? So the air is not moving. You are. So this is a fun thing to do. <gasps> Anybody have one of those little soldier guys with a parachute on it? I loved those things. I had them as a kid, thought they were the best things ever. This is a cool way to make your own. And you can make it an experiment. And this is an experiment in wind resistance. Because parachutes, <gasps> they catch the wind and you can feel it pulling against your hand. You can put your hand in just a plastic bag and wave it around. Kind of feels like your hand when it's underwater. You feel that resistance, okay? So parachutes use wind resistance to its advantage. If you jumped out of a plane without a parachute, nothing's going to slow you down. But a parachute will catch the air and cause resistance, which puffs up that parachute canopy, and it slows you down. So a fun thing to do, all I did was take a square of a plastic bag. Can you guess where from? So I took a square from a plastic bag. It's, I don't know, I have a ruler. Let's see how big this is. It is roughly 10 inches long. So 10 by 10, because it's a square, which means both all sides are equal. So 10 by 10 square. I chose this bag. You can choose any bag you want to. A fun experiment is to use different kinds of plastic. Maybe get one from Target. Get one from Hobby Lobby, one from Publix. Different textures will give you different results. You can make smaller ones. You can make bigger ones. It's a really cool experiment to see which parachute would be the best. And then I just took a paper clip. Mine happens to be blue, but it doesn't matter what color. One of the big jumbo paper clips. And then some really 
thin string, okay? Not the kind of stuff you make blankets with. Something you would like sew a button on with. So like really thin string. And all I did was tape it to all four corners and then tape it to my paper clip. And then you hold the top of it. It's easier if you're up high, like on a step ladder or a chair with parental supervision. Or if you live in a house with stairs, you can get at the top of the stairs and like toss it off the side, okay? So what happens? It goes up and the canopy catches the wind and causes air resistance to make it go down. All right, let's try that one more time. Here we go, last time. Oh, it didn't open all the way. I got my strings tied up. That's the bad thing about parachutes. You have to make sure none of your strings are tangled up because that would not be good for your skydiver. Okay, here we go. One more time. Ah, there we go. Now that's a Target bag. You can try it with a Walmart bag, any bag you want. The more bags you have, you can try all different ones and it makes a really cool experiment for air resistance. So, you know, we may not really be able to live if gravity disappeared, but it's a really cool story to think about. And in fact, I also challenge you to come up with your own stories. If you go by any of our, our local branches, whichever one's closest to you, we have Take and Make Crafts, and this week they're all about Imagine Your Story. So it's all about coming up with your own stories, and it's super fun. I love to do it. So go by one of your local branches, and get one of those craft bags and you can come up with all kind of cool stories with our writing prompts. So until next time, see you guys later. Bye.